as long as long as long. Welcome everybody. So we got a full house, a little bit. Um, Brother Solo, are you there? As long. Can you read? Well, let's start off with the Moorish American Prayer. Then I want you to, um, if you can, if you read the Divine Constitution of Allah. That's cool. Well, um, Four two fingers on the right, five on the left. You have to me. Go to yourself. The law of Father Universe. Father Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom, and Justice. Love's my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, it was Holy Cross. Father, Amen. Amen. Islam moves. Islam. Like the first to rise near praise to Allah, Father of the Universe, give the highest honors to his noble prophet, Drew Ali. <clears throat> give honor to all true and divine prophets, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius, to the forerunner, Marcus Mazai Garvey, and staying those honors to all Asiacs of America, and especially Moorish Americans of a clean and pure nation, Islam. <clears throat> Salvation, Allah, unity, the more science temple of America, the divine constitution and bylaws. Act one, the grand sheik and the chairman of the more science temple of America is empowered to make law and enforce laws with the assistance of the prophet and the grand body of the more science temple of America. The assistant grand sheik is to assist the grand sheik in, in all affairs if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and is known before the members of the Morris Science Temple of America. Act two, all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the Circle Seven and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on a Friday, the first man was formed in flesh, and on a Friday, the first man departed out of flesh and ascended unto his Father God, Allah. For that cause, Friday is a holy day for all Muslims all over the world. Act three, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all members of the Morris Science Temple of America. No member is put in danger or accused falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because the law is love. Act four, all members must preserve these holy and divine laws and all members must obey the laws of the government because by being a Moorish American, you are a part and partial of the government and must live the life accordingly. Act five, this organization of the Moorish Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. Act six, with us, all members must proclaim their nationality and we are teaching our people their nationality and the divine creed that they may know that they are a part and a partial of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim the free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Juali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Mobites whom inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7. All members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and a partial of all uplifting acts of the Morris Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Morris Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. 
sons and daughters, most of big father and mother, and be industrious and become a part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your prophet, Noble Jew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah. Noble Jew Ali, founder, Moorish American prayer, Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, through his holy prophet, Jew Ali. Amen. The more signs to America, home office of Noble Jew Ali. Islam. Islam. Um, honors and thank you, Brother Solo, for reading our Constitution bylaws. Um, first, I rise and I give humble praise to Allah. I give honors to all the prophets sent. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, TTC, those messengers, holy men who were sent to as guides, the sages to bring us out of the darkness, out of the carnal, into the spiritual. Arise and give high honors to the one sent to us on the shores of North America, Prophet Abu Ali, who sent the message of our nationality, divine creed. I give high honors to his forerunner, Marcus Mosey Garvey, who brought an economic plan to help us free us. A social fight arise, and I gave high honors to the more Science Temple of America, the vehicle that was filed in Cook County in 1928 to be the nation within the nation the most. Arise and I honors to his leadership. First appointed Supreme Grand Sheik Edward Mealy you And I rise and I gave honors to the past Supreme Grand Sheik David Bailey Hill. And I rise and I give honors to the current Supreme Grand Sheik, Keith Dangerous Hill. They rise in honors to the Supreme Grand Council, rising in honors to each every sheep, governor, and the grand body, and a rise in honors and give high honors to each and every one of you on this call. I hope everyone is doing well, inshallah. Um, we are still in the middle of a, um, a pandemic pandemic, but I, from what I've looked, things are slowing down. Um, Trump made some major moves, crazy moves, uh, but there's a method to the madness, everything. You know, I think um, Bill Gates is certain, certainly his, uh, his intentions are not as pure as people think it is. Um, and there's a lot of credible professionals um, that we can look into, that, um, and I advise you guys to look into. Um, uh, Dr. Shiva is one, and Dr. Rashid Buttar is another. And uh, I think the, the one sister who is actually the one developing the vaccination for um, COVID-19, who works for the um, uh, well, not the World Health Organization, but the um, um, it is the immune, the immune, um, uh, the immune association um, uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Fossey is is um, head of. She's actually the leading, um, uh, I guess uh, she's like the leading vaccination researcher or whatever there but recently fox tried to expose her for some tweets she had put out recently and one of the tweets she said was that the COVID 19 was actually designed to kill off so-called black people at asiatics you can actually look that up and they're actually streaming her tweets on fox and trying to discredit her and so forth. So, um, you know, you know, supposedly her tweets are like a rant against white supremacy and, and the whole nine and everything. So that's definitely uh, interesting. It's interesting. And I think as Moorish American, as Moors, you know, we, we try to maintain things with the science, the mind of science. So we, we don't necessarily jump to conclusions, but we see things played out. 
you know, and that's what some people don't understand. You know, a lot of Moors uh, individuals, they want Moors to stand up and enforce the law at this time, do X, Y, and Z. But it was like, you know, <laughs> you know, why would we jump and respond to something that we're not even clear about what's happening? You know, Allah is the best of friends and we have to trust in Allah that things will work out. But when, when with someone who uses wisdom, they don't necessarily jump at any circumstance in every situation, but they see an opportunity. They look for the line of opportunity, the opening door, and then they walk through it when it's open. You know, there's different multiple doors that had opened in this time of quarantine, lockdown, shutdown, X, Y, and Z, you name it. And in this time of quarantine, there's time to reflect, time to design, create, connect, even though there's social distance, it's time to connect. It's time to put, like, you went over little chapters before, you know, 14, 15, you know, dealing with closing yourself out, taking the time to know yourself. Now, unfortunately, I won't say unfortunately, I'll just say my circumstances where I still had to go to work on a consistent basis, you know what I'm saying? But come to find out there's golden opportunity for overtime if I wanted to take it, you know what I'm saying? I have took some. So um, for the most part, this is a time for us to all really reflect, you know, really bog down, get into your, your studies and all that. And now approaching Ramadan, it's more of a time. And in speaking of Ramadan, oh, before I go into that, um, I do believe I got um, I got an email, um, I think a couple of days ago from my job, through our job email, and it's actually an announcement. I believe um, Governor Murphy announced that the kid, that the children, the schools probably be back open May 15th, okay? So they're probably going to finish the school year out and so forth and so on. So, you know, for those who got kids or whatever, you know somebody got kids in Jersey, you know, basically they're going to be going back to school soon. You know, so that's a good thing. Um, but that means that the situation is almost under control. You're talking about May 15th. That's less than a month away. You know what I'm saying? So it got into a point where they know or they came up with a method or they were able to get things under control. People are still catching it, but people are beating it now. Like everybody who has seen catch it or hear that caught it is beating it. My a good friend I grew up with, he just announced it that he just got over it. You know what I'm saying? So other people who are here are getting over it. So it's definitely a, a recovery chance. Um, you know, numbers have been spiked. So, you know, regarding that whole thing, like I said, please look into um, Dr. Shiva and Dr. Uh, Rashid Buttar. These are definitely medical experts on infectious disease and those type of things regarding, um, you know, what we're experiencing, all right? And don't be turned off the fact that there might be Republicans or something like that. See, we, uh, more as we don't play the Republican game or the Democrat game. We play whoever got our best interest, whoever's gonna do the job, you know what I'm saying? So if more as, you know, if we vote, Republicans, I don't mean with sellout, because there's Republicans that are doing the work, you know? So you know, we have to get out of that split party, um, you know, game. We don't, we don't really do that, right? Um, moving forward on Ramadan, Ramadan will be starting soon. Um, I believe that it's on the 21st or 24th. One of those, whenever the, the moon is sighted. So we'll be watching for that. Um, while in Ramadan, you know, this grand body, we do honor, and we do honor the practice of Ramadan and that where we do fast from sunup to sundown. Um, I'll be going over probably this week. I'll make another call where we'll just go over certain um, things to, that we need to look out for, you know, that we need to adhere to. Um, and uh, we also will be uh, delving into um, the life of Prophet Muhammad 
and we'll be also dealing with the revelation of the Quran, inshallah. And also, um, I do challenge um, you know, you more on the call to try to memorize a surah. You know, Fatiha, if you haven't memorized our Fatiha, memorize our Fatiha. That's the first surah um, in the Quran. Um, if you haven't memorized the chapter in the Moorish Holy Quran or, uh, or some verses, memorize those too. And this is a good time to also go and study and see the parallelism between both, you know, the divine revelation given to the Prophet Muhammad Salam, and also the Moorish Holy Quran compilation or the, the book that was divinely prepared. Okay. It was a divinely prepared book. Okay. Islam. So let's go into this because we are, and I did have a late start, so I do apologize. But trust me, I was laboring on something in the labor was on this presentation. <laughs> so we're gonna to try to go through the presentation. If you don't have notes, please take notes. Uh, we're gonna go over certain things and inshallah, you know, we'll, uh, let's see. Inshallah, we'll start the screen here. That's not what I want. <laughs> you know, brother, uh, Garnell's page. Um, okay. For those who got video, let me know if you can see this. Oh, yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Okay. Chapter 17, Jesus appears fully materialized. Apollo and the sign of brotherhood in Greece appears to Claudius. Okay, let me read that again. Right. Uh, apologies. Jesus appears fully materialized. Apollo and the sign of brotherhood in Greece appears to Claudius and Juliet on, on Tiber near Rome, appears to the priests in the Egyptian temple. Heliopolis. Okay. I had to read that a certain way because when you're dealing with the dashes, there's, there's a pause and it appears means it connects with the dash. That means Jesus appears. So dash gives a space for Jesus. And then it's supposed to be Jesus appears to the priest, so forth and so on. So when you have uh, Claudius and Juliet at Tiber uh, near Rome, that's a that's a complete idea, complete idea of sense, you know, a complete thought, and so forth. So and then it says Apollo and the sign of brotherhood in Greece, that means that he appeared, materialized, and Apollo, you know, and so forth. So I'm just going in on that situation. So y'all kind of get it clear. Because when this remember, this is a different time and era when of writing. You don't usually find books with um sub, you know subscriptions like this a lot of books are like that you get them older books and the books will have these subscriptions and they'll be broken up just just like that okay and you notice i use the ethiopian depiction of uh our brother brother prophet okay let's move forward apollo with the silent brotherhood of greece was sitting at Delphian Grove. The oracle has spoken loud and long. Okay, let's pause on first, first, the first verse. Apollo with the silent brotherhood of Greece. If anyone knows there is a silent brotherhood currently today, but it's actually like an Aryan white supremacist group up in Germany. But when we speak of the silent brotherhood, it's key. Manly P. Hall speaks about the silent brotherhood. The silent brotherhood was serious. You had to go at least five years without speaking, without talking at all, like literally. 
Like you had to go five years without saying a word to anyone. No conversation, no nothing. So you could be in the midst of anything amongst your family, amongst your friends, at work or whatever. You can't say nothing. They say, how you doing? You can't say nothing. And then once you complete your five, your five years, then you can you made it into the side of your side of birth. So it was a tax. Okay. Uh Apollo with the Silent Brotherhood of Greece was sitting at Delphian Grove. The Oracle had spoken loud and long. The priests were in the sanctuary, and as they looked, the oracle became a blaze of light. It seemed to be on fire and all consumed. The priests were filled with fear. They said, a great disaster is to come. Our gods are mad. They have destroyed our oracle. But when the flames had spent themselves, a man stood on the oracle's pedestal and said, Allah speaks to man, not by an oracle of wood and gold, but by the voice of man. The gods have spoken to the Greeks and the kindred tongues through images made by man. But a lot of the one now speaks to man through Jesus, the only son, who was and is and evermore will be. Okay. For anyone who's been following us, when we speak of uh, the term son, and it's an esoteric meaning, um, and some say, well, sun meaning, you know, the actual sun, you know, astrology and, and so forth. But no, when the term sun is applied and the term father is applied in spirituality, it doesn't mean a biological uh, connection. It doesn't mean an offspring connection. But these are words of expression, expressing the closest and an assimilation of one to following God that it reflects as a son. And that's just an expression. You know, you know that completely that no one individual here on the planet can contain the awesomeness of the divine the, the divine force or that we call Allah, or the divine being we call Allah. That in this flesh and this matter we cannot even think or even you know, pertain to even wrap our minds around who Allah is and true is from it. But when we follow the laws that lay down and the characteristics that are shown through these attributes, they're expressed to, you know, those who are, who are rightly guided and influenced, then we begin to become closer. So let's not be dismayed by the term son and thinking that it actually means a biological or some type of uh, uh, offspring in the sense of, you know, you know, Allah is actually, you know, here, you know, the awesomeness because Allah has given portion to everybody, you know, so Allah lives in within everyone else, you know, not just one person. Okay, so this, you know, we, want, we don't want to get, uh, we don't want to get confused with that, but going, but we take this section, we take one through six, and we understand what's going on. So the priests are actually having a meeting and they're being, you know, doing their daily or what they do normally. The oracle begins to speak and then it sets on fire. And then when a the fire has done blazing, appears Jesus. It's a symbolic. And this is an understanding of what prophets are or why prophets are coming. See, when man's consciousness is very tricky. That's why people say you control the mind, you control everything. Because the mind is such a delicate, it's the most delicate organ, organism or organ that you have inside your brain. Excuse me, wrong term, organ. The actual brain with a thought pattern is so fast, you have different multi layers to it, multi consciousness to it. And certain things, like I said before, you memorize that you don't even know you remember. You record things that you don't even know you record. 
This is why subjective, uh, covert subjective symbolism is placed in commercials and TV and all that to get you to buy things, to get you to do this. You know, you ever know that you had a conversation or you thought about something, about you want something, and then you go on your Facebook, you see advertisements or, 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 or Instagram, you see advertisements for that? Crazy, right? See, the people divide, uh, uh, developing in this tech, they know. Like, I'm looking for some spiritual stuff, you know, for this lesson. And then, you know, I'm seeing different groups, Gnostic groups pop up. I'm seeing Islamic groups pop up with different things. I'm like, wait a minute. How does all automatically come up? You know? So, but I didn't know exactly, you know, I'm thinking about, I thought about it. And, and you know, I didn't know the thought was still resonating. I was all thinking about something else in my first, my foreconscious. You know, so that's how tricky the mind is. So being that saying, man's consciousness, when man was first appeared, or for man first manifest, man had no problem focusing on Allah. Man had no problem focusing on Allah. And we'll go into this concept even further during Ramadan, because that's the, that's the key about Ramadan. See, what happened is when man begins to distance his understanding from Allah and focus on physical matter as an expression of Allah, even though Allah expresses himself through all facets of life, when you focus on those type of things and you begin to deify those things, that's a problem. When you say there's multiple facets of gods that need to be worshipped, that's, that's an issue. By not seeing that Allah is manifesting those things as one, and they're just attributes and aspects of it. But see, what happens is the rituals start coming more. And you got to do this, and you got to do that, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. You know, other people's consciousness begins to interfere with the message or the path. So now what people think was the original is actually someone else's conviction that came came into play and those who followed that person and then it becomes a whole jumbo of mess here with the sign of brotherhood you know jesus came and said you know you don't need any idols or any statue to really focus on you focus on the one who allah put first and that was man And that's where you find it. But, you know, we go into our a questionnaire. And the first question says, who made you? Allah. Who is Allah? Allah is the father of the universe. Can we see him? No. Where is the nearest place we can meet him? In the heart. Stop right there. In the heart. The nearest place you can meet Allah is in the heart. That don't mean you can't meet a lot anywhere else. But the focus, instead of you going through rigmarole, jumping through hoops, trying to find a law, the nearest place you can meet is in the heart, in the center of you, your essence. Find that, and you'll find a law. That's the, that's the message. So, moving forward. Six. Gods have spoken to Greeks in the kindred tongues through images made by man, but a lot of one now speaks to man through Jesus, the only son who was and is evermore will be. The oracle shall fail. The living oracle of Allah, the one, will not fail. Apollo knew the man who spoke. He knew it was the Nazarene who once had taught wise men of Acropolis, Acropolis and had rebuked the idol worshippers upon the Athens or Athens beach. In a moment, Jesus stood before Apollo in the silent brotherhood and said, behold, 
For I have risen from the dead with gifts of four men. I bring to you the title of your vast estate. There you go. This is the real vast estate. Islam. This is the Moorish vast estate. Moors are looking for land. They're looking for gold, physical treasures. But this is the actual vast estate. Your vast estate is your true self in connection with Allah. Because when you connect, everything else will come. When it says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things will be added unto you. Because it was in the first place when Allah made man to be in control, to be the visitor here on the planet. But if we don't focus on Allah, then that title, that title is not, we can't, that title is, is not deemed to us. So let's move forward. Move on. Keep reading. And in a moment, Jesus stood upon before Apollo and the silent brother and said, Behold, for I have risen from the dead with gifts for men. I bring to you the title of your vast estate. All power in heaven and earth is mine. To you I give all power in heaven and earth. Go forth and teach the nations of the earth the gospel of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal life through Jesus, the love of Allah may manifest to men. And then he clasped Apollo's hand and said, my human flesh was changed to a higher form by love divine. I mean, I can manifest in flesh or the higher planes of life at will. What I can do, all men can do. Go teach the gospel of the impotence of man. Then Jesus disappeared for Greece and Crete and all the nations heard. So all the nations heard of this, okay? So right now he's in Greek. He appears to the silent brotherhood because remember, he asked to pass through the silent brotherhood. So he went back and he showed him, look, look what happened. I've done it. Allah, by Allah, I became will manifest. I became the love manifest. But you can do it too. That's the message. You can do it too. And then he's speaking of basically being in charge of heaven and earth, being the plan that is given to you through the past or through the, through the method that he has done. So that's pretty much what's being you know, expressed in this pretty much session, in this session. So, but here's the thing though, and I go a little deep into who Apollo was, it's key. And it's funny how in his passage, Apollo is actually Apollonius of Tyana. Wrong? Apollonius of Tyana. It's a brief description of who he is. Apollonius dates uncertain. Primary biographer, uh, Philostratus, the elder, who, of course, born as uh, common era. 170, died uh, Kamara 247, places him at 3 BC before Kamara to, and probably died in 97 Kamara. Others agree that he was roughly a contemporary of Jesus in Nazareth. States that his date of birth was three years before Jesus, whose date of birth is also uncertain. Philostratus in his life of Apollonius to Tyana pushes Apollonius as staying in the court of King Bernadus, the first of Parthia, for a while who ruled between 40 common area and 47 common. Apollonius began a five year silent at the age of 20, because he was joining the silent brotherhood. And after the completion of this silence, traveled to Mesopotamia and Iran. Apollo Stratus also mentions 
think it was Nero, but uh, Vespasian, Titus, Domitian, Nerva, at various points throughout Apollonius life. So he lived to see these different rulers at this time uh, through their campaign and rulership. Uh, given this information, timeline of roughly the years of 15 to 90, uh, years 15, 98, can be established for his adult life. So he, he his adult life started at 15 and ended at 98. So he almost lived to be 100 years old. Wow. Move forward here. So we said Apollonius in comparison to Jesus. Apollonius and Jesus were born three years apart. Both performed miracles. Both appeared as an opposed threat to Roman authorities. Because Apollonius was a uh, Pythagorean or Neo Pythagorean. Anyone who studied Pythagorean sciences were actually students of the ancient comedic mysteries that were left over, okay? Because that's who Pythagorean or Pythagoras went to learn his studies in the ancient ancient Kemet, okay? So, and technically you could say, and I, I should put in another bullet note that Jesus also was known to be a student of the uh, ancient Kemet uh, uh, mysteries, Islam. Okay. Number four, both had disciples. Both traveled to India. Many say that the narrative of Jesus was actually the account of the life. Oh, I said Jesus. I should say Apollonius. Part of the body. That was actually, uh, let me go back. I'll fix that. <laughs> it's actually the life of Apollonius. Both stood as an example of the mythical hero story. So, if you read about Apollonius, <clears throat> in comparison with Jesus, both were are actually the mythical, uh, both of them were mythical, or they represented the mythical hero, resurrecting, opposing the, the common authority with knowledge itself, you know, particular things, performing miracles, and so forth. Um, Apollonius wasn't crucified, but he did run off. He was, uh, he did leave. You know, he leave, he left the uh, lived to 98, but basically he was met with opposition. Known Islam. Basically, he was known in Islam. Apollonius was a known figure in the medieval Islamic world. In Arabic literature, he appears as Balinas, or Balinas, or Balinas, or Abulunayas. Arabic speaking occultists dubbed him the Lord of the Talisman. Sahib at Talisma and related stories about his achievements as a talisman maker. They appeared to him, or they appreciated him as a master of alchemy and a transmitter of hermetic knowledge. Some occult writings circulated under his name. Among them were the Kitab Sir Al Halika, the book on the secret of creation, also named the Kitab Al Ilal, the book on the causes. Uh, Rasalun Fita Tatir, Aruhani, excuse me, I'm, I'm messing that up. Well, I'll just read the English. <laughs> Tristes, or the influence of the spiritual beings on the composite things. Um, great introduction of the Tristes, the talismans, the Kitata, uh, the great book of Balinus, uh, talismans, and Kitab Al Hakim, uh, the book of ages of Abus. Medieval uh, alchemist Jabir al Hayyan, the book of stones according to the opinion of Alans, contains an exposition and analysis of the views expressed in Arabic occult works attributed to Apollonius. There were also medieval Latin and uh, vernacular translations of Arabic books attributed to Balinus. The Tablet of Wisdom, written by Baha'u'llah, who's the founder of the Baha'i faith. Means Balinus Apollonius as the great philosopher who surpassed everyone else in the diffusion of arts and sciences and soared unto the loftiest heights of hum humility and supplication. That's what the uh, founder of the Bahia uh, movement, Bahia faith. I want you to notice something, Morris. Is it me or is this supposed to be a bus of Apollonius? You notice his nose 
is damage. That's an all far often or too often pattern. Why are your noses damaged? You know his beard is a little, a little coarse there. Well, his nose is damaged. What makes you think. That's why I blew this one up. I wanted, I was gonna put another one in, another picture I found, but I saw this one. I was like, yeah, there go that, there goes that nose damage. Very interesting. Let's move forward. Claudius and Juliet, his wife lived on the Palatine in Rome, and they were servants of Tiberius. Tiberius was emperor at the time, supposedly. In this passage, he was emperor. But they have been in Galilee. So basically, they go to Galilee to visit and so forth, so you know who they run into. Had walked with Jesus by the sea, had heard his words, and seen his power. And he believed that he was Jesus made manifest. Now, Claudius and his wife were on a Tiber in a little boat. The storm swept from the sea. The boat was wrecked, and Claudius and his wife were sinking down to death. Okay. Jesus came, took them by the hands, and said, Claudius and Juliet, arise, and walk with me upon the waves. And they arose and walked with him upon the waves. Thousand people saw three on the waves and saw them reach the land, and they were all amazed. Jesus said, You men of Rome, I am the resurrection and the life. They that are dead shall live, and many that shall live will never die. By now for gods and demigods, Allah spoke unto the fathers long ago. But now he speaks to you through perfect man. What he's saying is basically, in this, is everyone in the past, in the past practices. But this is the quest why, you see, you know, when the prophet number Dali pulled this passage out, he pulled it from the Aquarian gospel of Jesus Christ. In Aquarian gospel, the whole thing is the reason why it's called Aquarian gospel, because it deals with the Aquarian age. The Aquarian age is supposed to come out of the Piscean concept, the religious concept, the idol worship, the rituals. It is supposed to circumvent and, and, and help and bring it back to the point where man is focused on his internal self and not looking towards outward idols and so forth for worship doesn't need anyone to speak through or speak for but if he's true to himself allow to speak within him as needed as long so move before he says he sent his son jesus in human flesh to save the world and as I lifted from the water grave and saved these servants of Tiberius, so Jesus will lift the sons and daughters of human race. It's a symbolic. Ye everyone, I mean, yea, everyone of them from darkness, from graves of cardinal things to light and everlasting life. The grave of cardinal things. So we think about the cardinal flesh that particular thing becomes a great for us. So praise Allah for Ramadan is coming because now we can, you know, we, we get we, we get thrown off the thrown off our boats like Claudius and Juliet. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes we need something like a period of fasting and, and so forth to, to bring us back to where we, you know, we get a stable again. Storm comes, things come. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we bring the storms ourselves because of our inconsistency. But sometimes that, that, that has to happen because it has to knock you down to bring you back up and bring you around, you know. So things like the corona, COVID-19, all these things, you know, we know that they possibly are man-made, but a lot of the best of all planets, they're not it is not out of the will of Allah. Because things are, 
a made done in sequence. Like I said, man plans, you, you know what I'm saying, but a lot of the best of planners. It doesn't matter what man plans. It doesn't matter what Bill Gates, Trump, any of them plan. At the end of the day, it's all going to work for where it needs to work. If we stay fast, stay consistent, we'll be lined up on the side that will benefit us. As long. It says, I am the manifest of love raised from the dead. Behold, my hands, my feet, my side, which carnal man have pierced, causing Juliet, whom I have saved from death, or my ambassadors to Rome. And they will point the way and preach the gospel of the holy breath and the resurrection of the dead. Okay. And that was all he said. But Rome and all Italy heard. The priests of Heliopolis were in, the, were in their temple met to celebrate the resurrection of their brother Nazareth. So they heard about it. They knew that he had risen from the dead. So, and I wasn't able to point out the scripture, but there's a scripture in the Bible. And I wanted, I'm, I'm, a I'm just going to say this verbally because I wasn't able to put it, and I thought about putting it in the presentation. But there's a scripture, I believe, in Hebrews, where it says Jesus is a high priest in uh, Melchizedek. It says Jesus is a high priest in Melchizedek. You don't hear about Melchizedek barely in the Bible. But his name is mentioned in the New Testament and he's mentioned in the Old Testament. His name is mentioned also as al Peter in the Quran. And he meets with Moses and they go on a journey and Moses is tested, um, uh, I believe, three times. Um, but looking at who Melchizedek, and there's books on Melchizedek, there's people who wrote, there's people who go by that name Melchizedek, you know. Um, but when you find out who Melchizedek is and how Peter is, you understand there's a key characteristic about Melchizedek that nobody actually really brings out. It's the fact that Melchizedek does not die. He does not die. As we would know, as we know what death is or we understand death is in this human flesh, never happens. A kidder known as the green one. The energy of green, the color of green deals with life. You're dealing with a SAR. The SAR becomes a green one. When he was the green one, it was dealing with vegetation and growth. Life. The green deals with the heart chakra. You see a lot of pictures, medieval pictures of Jesus. He has his hand over his heart. Or he, he has the heart flaming in, in the middle of his chest. So I'm giving you something to think about. So when they say resurrection of the dead, it's a process. It's a ritual. He was a high, he was a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. That means that he mastered something. This is the he book of Hebrews. This is in the Bible. This is one of the canon books that they allow to stay within the books, the canon that they develop out of the Council of Nicaea. But it's dropping a jewel right there. Islam is dropping a jewel right there. All through my life in church, read the book of Hebrews, read all majority of the books, especially if you grow up in Pentecostal and Protestant churches, they focus on Paul's epistles more than they focus on a lot of other books. But they don't never talk about much sense of it. That's very interesting. You were like, well, a, I know, what's the order of Mount Sensei? Now, it's under my, my opinion, 
and y'all can test this, that in order to be in the order of Melchizedek, you have to defeat death. You have to overcome death. And that, that I'm just saying in context to that, you know what I'm saying? Is that, not, spirit, is that spiritual death or physical death, Islam? Spiritual death. Mm -hmm. And possibly that too. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, we're living in a time where we don't see high level spiritual men every day. Where in these times you saw it, it was nothing to walk through the marketplace and find someone, you know, or someone who was a, sp a spiritual individual to lead you a certain way. You know, people set out, you know, instead of us setting out, going to college, finding our careers, it was like, okay, you either gonna be this, work this, and you have certain people who say, look, I'm working, I'm gonna go follow, find me a sage, you know? So I'm just saying that's just my humble opinion, you know, and I I say that. So it's you know, but just from what I I read about the subject matter, so as well. Okay, let's look at Cordis and Julia and the concept of the scripture or the passage. It says balancing the polarities. When Jesus came and appeared to save them, and I, I, I found this little picture to represent them. Uh, you have a matter and soul. Balancing matter and soul within this realm or within this world. Or Cardus represents matter, and Julia would be the soul. When the, the soul, if you under, if you go and research it when you get a chance, the soul is usually predicted as a woman. They say the soul is, has a feminine energy. That's why a lot of women are very in tune to things of the soul. They have an intuition feeling. Their intuition feeling is more innate than it is in a man. A man, don't get me wrong, we have an intuition feeling too. But a woman, there's nothing like a woman who has that feeling. You know, she has that feeling for the people she care about or whatever, and even regardless. You know what I'm saying? She it's there. You know. Um, you know, so a woman is more in tune to her soul than what a man is. So some of the most I can say the most um prevalent, the most effective priests or priestesses were priestesses, you know. Of course, you have the priesthood, you have men, but when a woman, it, it's it's almost like a woman can actually, if you I can say this, a woman can actually accelerate in in the things of spirituality quicker than what a man can. You know, at the end of the day, it depends on in, the individual, but at the same time, a woman. Can accelerate a little more quicker than what a man is on. But when Jesus came in this passage to save Claudius and Juliet, it was actually the Jesus consciousness that balances. And he being perfected man represents the balance of the matter and the soul. That means the matter is not, or the things of, of material plane is not overcoming the soul. And the soul is entwined to the point where it can main, uh, materialize through matter in its physical form. As you can see when he talks about his body had changed. Saving of both male and female principles of man. There's a balance of male and female principles. Right now we're out of balance. Is it is it is the balance is off? Is either we're too masculine or we're too feminine? We're either upholding the man principle too high or we upholding the female principle too high. 
or what we think the female principle is, because we really don't, a lot of times the arguments, especially amongst our people, the Asiatics, you know, so-called conscious community, those alike, we argue about, you know, black man is God, or black woman is God, and all these different things. And we're still speaking from an understanding of physical gender and not understanding that the male, the masculine, the feminine, or the male and female are gender principles of functionality in the universe. And through the conscious mind, it's only through the perfected man conscious mind, or they'll say the Christ conscious, that those things are balanced out. And we understand them from a divine point, divine point of view. And once that happens, we don't need debates about whether man is God and the black woman, you know, black woman is God or black man is God. You know, my opinion, that shouldn't even be a debate. You know what I mean? Because they understand the principles of the universe, they understand each male, masculine, feminine, serve a purpose. At the end of the day, they serve a purpose. Okay. Um, and excuse me if I'm flying through this, but you know, time was closer, but you know, everything. And trust me, we are going to revisit this. We're going to revisit this. We are going to revisit this. 31, the Nazarite appeared and stood upon the sacred pedestal on which no man had ever stood. This was an honor that had been reserved for him who first would demonstrate the resurrection of the dead. Now remember, the resurrection of the dead is a concept throughout ancient Kemet in Egypt, or so-called Egypt. You know, this is where the concept comes. Okay, and they've been trying to journey through that. You know, some say they ask some, depending on what dynasty or era of time, how far you get into the, the studies of, of ancient Kemet. Some even said they have, some have uh, uh, actually mastered it. They're saying, you know, some say, well, I remember uh, Box had a uh, a special on Osiris. Was he a real person? And some experts said that Osiris was a real person at one time. One, like in the old dynasty, one of the first, first dynasty, ancient Kim, and his story is actually tell by a person who actually existed. Okay, now whether he mastered the overcoming death or whatever to that level, that, you know, saying, we, you know, we don't know. Now, some say, Mastering the death means not caught in a cycle of reincarnation. Okay. You know, where you break that cycle and then you go into a higher level. You know, and, and that's it. That means you don't have to do you don't have to do the human experience again. You know. And that, that I'm just saying from like a Hindu practice and, and yogi practice, that's pretty much what they're saying. You know, you could take that also as a reference. Okay. But the ancient Egyptians, they had the idea of resurrection. So this is why they already celebrating because it came like, yo, one of our students actually mastered. Right? So here comes, and Jesus was the first of all human race to demonstrate the resurrection death. When Jesus stood upon the sacred pedestal, the masters stood and said, all hail. The great bells of the temple rang, and all the temple was ablaze with light. Jesus said, all honor the masters of the temple of the sun. In flesh of man, there is an essence of resurrection of the dead. The essence quickened by the holy breath will raise the substance of the body to a higher tone. Key word, tone. What's another word for tone? Anyone knows Islam? 
It's another word for tone. Islam? Anyone knows? Could it, Islam. Could it's it be nothing. voice? Voice. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's another word. Uh, vibration. Vibration. Good. It's another word. <laughs> Measure. Measure. Good. There's another word. Tone. Frequency? No. Nah. Frequency. Could be, yeah. Frequency. Uh -huh. If somebody tell you to speak in an intelligent tone, yeah. what the tone is. <laughs> What would that tone mean? But well, you'll break it down. It's long more. <laughs> I mean, somebody say speaking a thousand tone, that means change the vibe, change the frequency of your of your tone. If I if I come to you and I'm speaking like, you know, I'm cussing, and I'm like, yo, I'm I'm a, I'm not even mad, right? I'm like, yo, this that I, I'm calling, you know, hey, I I was talking to. The lady at the, you know, saying this beat, she da 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 da, you know, I'm talking, you know, I'm just talking. Like I remember one time, I I used to um, I had a um, uh, I had a job at the mall. I was a, a housekeeper, and um, I had worked with this one guy. We do. He's from New York. He was, I think he was from Queens or Brooklyn. One of, I can't remember what borough he was from. But he came down, he was working, whatever, he was cool. But I ain't like talking to him, you know? And this is before I was conscious at all. I wasn't really conscious at the time. But I just couldn't take him saying the B word. Like, you know, he couldn't even say, hey, I talked to, you know, see this girl over there. He called her B, like, it's like on a regular, like it's just flying out the mouth. You know, and I see that a lot. You know, with, you know, and then even with uh, you know, women in, in general, some women they just like, hey, me, you know, what I mean, like it's a like a term of endearment. You know, but that's not intelligent tone. That's not an intelligent frequency. Your words are vibration. The vibrations change the frequency. They change the tone. Quicken. Quicken. By the Holy Breath. Quicken is to change the, the vibration, to change it. Activate it. It's quicken, it's activated. And you use the word quicken, move. Right? Vibration deals with move, movement. Everything's vibrating. Seven principles. Of her, uh, of um, Tahuti. Wow, what well, it says, rhythm. Everything has a pattern. Vibra no, vibration, then rhythm, right? You got mentalism, you got correspondence. You know what I'm saying? You got um, vibration. Well, actually, mentalism, vibration, correspondence, polarity, rhythm. Uh, gender cause and effect. So you have when you get to the vibration, everything's moving. That's a de that's a definition. Of it. Quick definition. Everything's moving. Nothing's still. Right. The essence begins to be quickened. That means it's it's actually awakening or you're actually moving that through by the holy breath, the consciousness. Holy breath is a consciousness. It's not just you doing breathing techniques. It's a consciousness that works. Your thoughts is connected to your thoughts. Because you can do the brave breathing techniques, but if you're not in tuning thoughts to the breathing techniques, it's not going to be quick enough. It will raise the substance of the, whole, the body to a higher tone. Changes your frequency of your body.
change the frequency of your body. Now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna come back to this. This one verse, 36. And let me finish this one uh, real quick. And make it like the substance of the bodies of the planes above. The planes above. We, we, we read about that. Chapter 11. Islam. Dealing with the, 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 um, the seven planes. The seven Elohim. That breathe forth the seven planes. Islam, there's a holy ministry in the death. And people, you know, people looking at death, they're crying. It's a sad thing. I understand. You know, when my grandmother passed, that was horrible for me. I, you know, the first, first few days, it was tough. I played it off the first day. I know I didn't. Actually, I broke down crying when I got to the job. My supervisor at the time gave me a hug. Uh, you know, I was nice of her. Um, she asked me if I wanted to go home. I'm like, I, I, you know, because I, I was like, you know what? Let me just try to finish the day out. You know, we planned the trip for all the kids at the school, uh, the autistic kids. We wanted to take them out to the farm. And I was like, man, I ain't trying to bail out because they need somebody to get the vans and all that. So, you know, I, I'll probably take a day off tomorrow. You know, I got a call from uh, actually Carrie Lindale called me. He got you he heard. He called me, he gave me some some kind words. Um, a couple other brothers had called. People had called me. Cool, suck it up, right? <laughs> the next morning I woke up. <laughs> I was no good. <laughs> I was no good, man. So, you know, my son saw. He was just like, oh. He knew what time it was. He knew what it was. He said, yeah, yeah. Your grandma passed. I was like, yeah. So, and that was crazy because both of my grandmas had passed the same week. You know what I mean? So it was it was a hard hit. But um, when we understand what death is, we understand there's a ministry in it. There's a lesson to it. There's a talk to be taught to us. The essence of the body cannot be quickened by the holy breath until the fixed is sought. The body must disintegrate and this is death. We're not talking about your body rotting in the ground. We're talking about its passions, its, freak, its frequencies need to disintegrate of the flesh. It needs to go away. Slowly, it didn't say destroy it or, or remotely. Now it's giving you an idea. It, it says disintegrate. You ever seen water disintegrate? It's not a quick. It's not a quick process. Or ice. Let's say this. Don't say water. Let's say ice. You seen ice disintegrate? What has to happen? It has to melt down to liquid first. First, a frequency has to change. The heat changes the vibration of the, of the atoms. The atoms in the ice start to speed up. Become faster in the ice. And therefore, it becomes liquid. And then it becomes gas. And that's the disintegration. It's a process. The ice doesn't jump from ice to gas. And this is what it's telling you. See, you got a lot of people who want to be Superman real quick. And they end up going to the crazy house. As long. That's why you got to deal with your passions steadily. People want to do this real quick. You be like, give me this talisman. Give me this prayer book. Give me this, you know, in the, in the Sufi uh, uh, tradition. Give me this liquor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want to go through the chambers. You just got in. I asked you the first page of the, of the Morse questionnaire. Do you know it? Can you break down the, the charter? Can you break down the, 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 the Constitution and bylaws? 
can you break down a chapter in the Moors or the Quran? And I don't mean chapter one. I'm talking about the easy chapters. Break down some. Break down another chapter. Break down the you know what I'm saying dealing with the uh, the workshop of the mind. As long can you demonstrate that in your life? I want to go into the chambers now. You wait a minute. You got some things got to disintegrate. It's a process. What you see in places like, or think, venues like the conscious community and so forth is people not going through the process. Go on Facebook, you see all these people practicing these, trying to deep occult science, voodoo, a lot of people jumping into voodoo. Why? What are you allowing to disintegrate? Why are you trying to get the, the power and the manifestation so quick? People on the back of, uh, you know, you have people with these different sages and, and shakes and, and so forth, advertising on the back of um, newspapers, and they got, you know, they got little business cards, call me, do this, 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 you know, get that quick fix. I'm gonna get this quick fix. I'm gonna go about my life. Then you gotta die. He said, "Die before you die." That's what some some Sufi said. You need to die. Ramadan is coming. It basically will be here. This is the perfect chance to work on the body to disintegrate. Thirty-nine, verse thirty-nine, and then upon the plant substances, Allah breathes, just as He breathed upon the chaos of the deep, and worlds are formed. A life springs forth from death. Carnal form is changed to to form divine. I give you a process here. It's telling you. There's people in India now, yogis in India now meditate and their skin is different some even say there are light mighty beings that exist in those hills of, of uh in the yogi hills of in in, in uh hindustan or india because all they do is meditate they go without substances Verse 41, the will of man makes possible the action of the Holy Ghost. The will of man. When will of man and will of Allah are one, the resurrection is a fact. It's not a mystery. What we're talking about is balancing the physical matter and the spiritual matter. Where you become a, a, a channel, all divine things flow through you. And it has a physical reaction when your body's not the same. In this, we have a chemistry of mortal life, the ministry of death, and the mystery of deific life. You understand the chemistry. He says, in this, we have a chemistry of mortal life. So we're talking about the chemistry of your body through the ministry of death, Manifesting the mystery of deity life. So you have to deal with the chemistry of your body, of mortal life. The chemicals, the hormones that send through you from your brain as your thoughts activate certain hormones. I don't know if anyone's seen uh, What the Bleak Do We Know? But in the section of that documentary, it talks about the brain sending signals, hormones, reacting in the body to the thought processes being put forth on the brain. So 
So the science is being told is that chemistry, dealing with your chemistry inside your physical body, right? T taming it, taming it, sorry, taming it from ministry of death by letting it disintegrate or, dis or dissolve. That means you're not, your passions that are governed by the carnal flesh begins to fade away. And then you begin to unlock the mystery of the your life. This is why Holy Day, Friday is a holy day. Because Friday is the day which first man was formed in the flesh. And it was on a Friday that he departed out of flesh. Understand that science. You can look at these and understand that science. They give you the science. My human life was wholly given to bring my will. Now, this is Jesus talking to the priest. But he, this is this has a double, um, as I say, this it's basically even though he's talking to the priest, he's talking to the reader. He says, "My human life was wholly given to bring my will to tune with the deific will. When this was done, my earth tasks all were done. Remember, after you fight the plane." Fight on the plane of uh, things of flesh manifest. You fight on the plane of soul. You still have to go and do do work on the plane of soul. And you, my brother, know full well the foes I have meet had to meet. You know about my victories in Gethsemane, my trials in the court of men, my death upon the cross. You know that all my life was the great drama, key word, for the sons of men and a pattern for the sons of men. I live to show the possibilities of man. Do you understand Islam? I'm gonna read that again. You know that all my life, read it as a code, all my life was, a, was one great drama a great drama, this is some symbolic. If anything, we could argue to the sun that come up. Not, and you know, I'm arguing with people, you know, foolishly you argue with the existence, whether the existence of a Jesus or not. Regardless, the life that's being told of Jesus is a one drama and it's a pattern for the sons of men. This is to show as a symbolism of what we can do. 46, what I have done, all men can do. What I am, all men shall be. Masters, look, the form upon the sacred pedestal had gone. But every temple priest, every living creature said, praise Allah. We move forward. Now remember, we said frequency. But another form of frequency is sound. And this is a little touch. You get an idea. Quran, or the Quran, Surah 15. This is Akarim, um, I had 28. I didn't put 29 yet because I really wanted to focus on. Um, oh, actually, I'm going to read I had 29. It mentioned, O Muhammad, when your Lord said to the angels, I will create a human being out of clay from an altered black mud. Now, like a lot of Qurans, interpretations of the Quran. have other meanings of this particular, they don't have altered black mud on uh, mud. But when I have the first one of the first corners I had, this is what came came about. I bought this at a bookstore. And 
it hit me when I read this. And I said, wow, this is this is what, you know, you know, I heard this before. I heard, you know, you know, they're saying that man was created from black mother or clay. But this one says black clay from an from an altered black mud. So I want, I want you to look at I want you to look at two things. Remember, he says the essence, the essence of the body. You talk about frequency, you talk about sound. In some forms, the altar is sound. They'll say sound black mud. A frequency. So a more man was. With, uh, I will create a human being out of clay from an altered black mud. We're talking about a frequency. In other parts, he's talking about ether. He's talking about the ethereal being. He's not talking about flesh at this point. Why clay? Clay is talking about the density in comparison to the fire. Which the gym will create prior. But as you can see, and if you when you get a chance, read um I 29 too. And it says, So when I made man, or when I made him complete and breathe into him of my spirit, fall down making obeisance to him, or the associated with um, prostration. We're talking about the angels. Speaking to the angels, he's telling me, I will create a human being out of clay from an altar black mud. So when I'm done, I'm paraphrasing, and I breathe my spirit into him, fall down and make prostration. And then, you know, if you read this passage further, Iblis is the only one, or he him saying, I'm not going to do it. Okay? But we're focusing on these two ayats because it connects to what we're saying, what Jesus is saying in the passage. It's talking about the frequency of your skin, the frequency of your flesh. It's talking about the ether body. The ether body. Harmonizing the ether body. Raising your, your your vibration to the ether. So they become in tune with each other. Move forward. Ether body, tone, frequency. How can you alter your frequency? Think about it. It says holy breath. What else? It's the foods we eat. Our thoughts. Our thoughts is very key on changing our frequency. And of course, the food we eat and the things we put in our body is very important. That's something you got, you know, more to think about. How can we alter our frequency? Let's move forward. Here's a... Uh, you can't really see all that, excuse the the cutoff, but we got atomic body, we got the Buddha body, we got the casual body, mental body, the astral body, the etheric body, the physical body. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the seven bodies. And then your physical body. Etheric body is the one that serves as the medium between your physical body and all the other bodies on the different planes. These are different planes. And these bodies exist. These are your bodies on these different planes. And your ether body is the one that serves as a, a medium between 
the physical body, and all these other bodies. You raise your physical body or your physical mind, your conscious, to the etheric body, then these begin to channel You got an astral body, you got the mental body, which is basically in the center, because the mental body basically can control or channel you through all these. Move on. Okay, move forward. Got a little video. And this is a ether body explained. About three minutes. I hope I don't get flagged for this. <laughs> the etheric body, ether body, other body, a name given by neo-theosophy to a vital body or subtle body propounded in esoteric philosophies as the first or lowest layer in the human energy field, or aura. It is said to be in immediate contact with the physical body, to sustain it as connected with higher bodies. The English term etheric in this context seems to derive from the philosophical writings of Madame Blavatsky, but its use was formalized by C.W. Leveder and Annie Besson due to the elimination of Hindu terminology from the system of seven planes of bodies. Adger School of Theosophy. The term gained some general popularity after the 1914-18 war drive. Walter John Kilner having adopted it for a layer of the human atmosphere, which, as he claimed in a popular book, could be rendered visible to the naked eye by means of certain exercises. The classical element either of Platonic and Aristotelian physics continued in Victorian scientific proposals of aluminiferous ether as well as the cognate chemical substance ether. According to Theosophist and Alice Bailey, the etheric body inhabits an etheric plane which corresponds to the four higher subplanes of the physical plane. The intended reference is therefore to some extremely rarefied matter, analogous in usage to the word spirit, originally breath. In selecting it as the term for a clearly defined concept in an Indian-derived metaphysical system, the Theosophists delighted with ideas such as the Brana Maya Kasha, sheet made of Brana subtle breath or life force of standard thought. In popular use, it is often confounded with the related concept of the astral body as, for example, in the term astral projection, the early theosophists had called it the astral double. Others prefer to speak of the lower and higher astral. In the teachings of theosophy, devas are regarded as living either in the atmospheres of the planets of the solar system, planetary angels, or inside the sun, solar angels, presumably other planetary systems and stars of their own angels, and they help to guide the operation of the processes of nature such as the process of evolution and the growth of plants. Their appearance is reputedly like colored flames about the size of a human being. It is believed by theosophists that devils can be observed when the third eye is activated. Some, but not most, devils originally incarnated as human beings. It is believed by theosophists that nature spirits, elementals, gnomes, omdens, sylphs, and salamanders, and fairies can also be observed when the third eye is activated. It is maintained by theosophists that these less evolutionarily developed beings have never been previously incarnated as human beings. They are regarded as on a separate line of spiritual evolution called the dev evolution. Eventually, as their souls advance as they reincarnate, it is believed they will incarnate as devas. Let me close it out with this. And um, basically, the video speaking about ethereal body. And as you can see that it's like a gateway to other planes above mastering or, or channeling it. Okay. 
Um, and it talks about different, you know, she talks about different angels on different, you know, planes. And, and it, it's basically chapter one, chapter one of the Morris Holy Quran. That's play, you know. So you think about the prophet Nabu Ali, what he was dealing with at the time. You know, he was dealing with, you know, someone who wrote chapter one when he believed the prophet did. Had to be someone who was in tune with those particular realms. Um, if you know anything about prophethood, those men who stood in that position, all of them had in that intuitive or that tone or that vibration. All of them were dealing with the ether. Prophet Muhammad was dealing with the ether. That's why Jabril was able to appear to him. If, Muhammad, if Prophet Muhammad was just dealing with the cardinal, he would have never, the revelation would have never came. See, all we get when we're dealing with the revelation revealed to Prophet, Prophet Muhammad when we're dealing with what we know or what was told, I could say this, none of us had, were actually there in detail. But you can imagine that his process, Islam, that what he was doing when, when he was going back, when he was meditating, he was fasting, he was praying, something was quickened in him at that time. Something was quickened. And therefore he was in tune and he could see Jabril. Jabril didn't come down. Jabril was there. Is that right? It's just he couldn't see or hear him at the top. But through his fasting, through his praying, he was able to change his frequency and vibration. Now he could see the things that weren't seen before. I know one adept told me that he was told by another adept that the, the elders want to speak to you, but your eyes are too fleshly. Yeah, I have this conversation with this bad up a lot. We talk about a lot of deep things, and hopefully, inshallah, I can, you know, we can build those on this call who happen to, when you, uh, we happen to be blessed and fortunate to go through that, that chamber of the more science of America. You know, I you know, I have some connections that some people in the grand body don't have. And um, you know, I don't I don't I don't milk the cow all the time, you know, because you know, I don't wanna because it's a process. You know, I have to you know, things got to disintegrate, but the you know, add up that I know, when we began to con converse and have conversations, is one of the things he told me that he was told. And he said, you know, you saying the eyes are too fleshy. When the eyes are too fleshy, you cannot see what you need to see. My grand sheep, my former grand sheep, Elijah Russell L said, Soul plane, we, we're tuned into the flesh, but the soul plane, we're not far from the soul plane. Soul plane is right here. You ain't got to go nowhere to go to the soul plane. You just have to change your frequency. And the soul plane will begin to manifest. If you read the book of um, Secret Doctrine by uh, Madame Bavaski, she Whoa. begins. She begins to understand, she begins to show that demonstration through when she says the vibration changes. And different elements begin to be more prevalent on the planet. There's elements in, 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 in 
and things that exist, but we don't know that they exist because we're different, dealing on a different frequency. But once the frequency changes, the environment changes. Some people attribute things to global warming, but it's not global warming. It's the earth, the frequency, the vibration changing. So certain fruits and plantation and vegetation that was prevalent at one time might even be prevalent. And there's certain vegetations and fruits that were prevalent a while ago are now coming back into existence. There's creatures that they just now discover. It's probably the frequency. They ain't new. Islam's I took a picture of the charter. This is an old charter. Now, I can't really tell you whose charter this is. I believe this is an original charter. Possibly. Um, but whether it is or not, that's not the point. I'm laboring. I want you, when you look at the charter, you see the eye of Allah. This represents Allah. Why? Because it's eye, the eye is usually the gateway. The eye represents the omnipotence, it represents the universal passion. This is where we have an understanding, true understanding of Allah. That's when the third eye is awakened. Give me all some jewels. So if you ever look at the charter, you see Prophet Noah Dwali at the bottom. He's standing directly in a line with Allah. This is a reason why he's at the bottom. These are considered, these are called the houses. Boom, boom, we got four here. You got four on each side, which is eight. You got the eye up here, Allah, and you got a prophet. This is a, this can be comparison to the Kabbalah or the tree of life. Where prophet is on the physical plane here, but even though he's in the physical plane, he is straightly in tune with Allah, his consciousness. And I put will, his will is in alignment. So I put the word will up there. You see this red back there, Morris? This actually means fire. It's the prophet holding back the flame. It's not, some people say it's the flame of a uh, judgment. But after you read this chapter, that's him manifesting Allah's will. So once Allah's will is manifested, as Jesus appeared to the sages, And the oracles, the oracle was destroyed. All idols are destroyed now. Prophet Abu Jali is standing as an example of light, of will manifested in man. Allah's will manifested in man. He said he's standing on the pedestal. So when we are when we are in converse with these different moors and so forth, we have these different ideas, and we tell them to come into the more scientific method. This is the reason why, Moors. Because the will is in alignment in the, in the movement. If done right. Now that doesn't mean that your will is in alignment automatically. <laughs> But if you follow the example, 
you read the materials. The prophet gave, when he spoke to Emilia, the first Supreme Grand Sheet, he gave him, he told him to study the Quran, study the questionnaire, study the Constitution, divine Constitution bylaws. That's all he told him to study. He didn't give him no mystery book, or the, uh, no extra books or nothing. He still told him to study that. So you can have an understanding. Islam, the will of Allah manifested through the prophet. Islam, y'all. Stop share. All right, Moors, any questions? Are you able to forward any questions before we close out? As long. Any questions? I'm gonna move to uh, to announcements. Um, it's very important at this time that we begin to think and gear our minds towards convention. We need to find out. I need those who want to come. I need to find out who's coming. Islam. If you're coming, let me know. So we can actually begin to plan accordingly. Flights to Chicago are very cheap. You can get a round trip under a hundred dollars. I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, we also, if, I mean, I'm not against a road trip, either, um, drive, but just, you know, to be honest, some of many of us don't have the credit to get a rental and some of our vehicles probably won't even make it that far. Um, I don't know. I think, you know, so, I, you know, I'm not judging, but this deal will be out. So we gotta actually try to see what we can do. Convention's coming up. We wanna start thinking what we, what we need to do for a convention. Okay. Um, convention will be at um, uh, it'll be at the hotel, we'll do the Cranton. Um down in uh i forgot the name of the airport not midway but it's another it's the other airport in chicago um but they're trying to like i said they're trying to make the sister who's in charge she's actually going to try to talk and get some more discounts see if she can get a better discount for us okay it's a little burden us but um in order for me to put people in for the adept chambers and i'm just saying this in general because um i don't know who's going to listen to this after this done before so you know so those moors who are not on here where morris miles on mission 28 you need to get in contact with me and let me know whether you're coming or not so we know definitely how we're going to go about doing this and um, from the looks of it, things might be a little um, convenient. Well, I don't know if it be, I don't want to say convenient, but things might. Um... Oh, here, yeah, thank you, bro. Yeah, oh, here. Uh, oh, here, um, airport. 
So that's the that's the one we're going into. Um, before we go, I want to before we end up going to Chicago, I definitely want to have we definitely gonna have to meet and talk about certain things before you go. Um, uh, so you guys can be aware of what goes on. I just want to uh, you know you know more than not perfect. By our lives. You know I'm saying so we have to um I see a question of uh, Islam brother even uh brother even. um yeah gnosis or Enlightenment or development comes the first step um, getting closer to that point is the edit show. Um, the actual ritual um, is set to put you in tune. Um, Does anyone reach Gnosis? I'm going to start with that question. I have not met anyone who reached Gnosis via the Adat Chamber or the more science of Um, That being said, is the only reason because of the history of division that occurred and people that took their portion understanding with them. So the Adda Chamber didn't have had lost its potency. Okay. So I'm being honest. Like I gotta be straightforward. I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, sugarcoat everything and make it look like it's this grand thing. But the keys and the lessons that I left are in the more science to the more Holy Quran, the more science, the um Holy Quran, the more science simple man. It's keys. The breath, frequency, changing the thoughts, disintegration of the flesh or the cardinal flesh. You know? Those things are key. The process of doing it as laid out in different other religions and, and so forth has not been perpetuated in the more science of America anywhere um, in the midst of that. I would say it's due to, like many would say, the division of people playing uh, everlasting sheep it means that <laughs> she's that hold, you know, hold a position for like ever, um, hold a secrets forever, you know. Um, there's a lesson, there's a lesson in the questionnaire where I read earlier, um, where it says, or is ask you, can you see a lot? Answer is no. Where's the closest place to meet him? You can meet him. In the heart. And where's the nearest part of my? Where's the nearest place you can meet him? In the heart. What is the nearest place you can meet him in the heart? Every Sunday in most temples, they go over these questions with baby. And they go over that question. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, spiritual practices. 
I understand what you're saying. Um, many of us have incorporated um, understanding of, um, and I'll answer what you're saying. Uh, for that question real quick, what you're asking, um, Brother Abdul, many um, people incorporate like um, meditating um, along with um, um, uh, chanting and zikr. Um, because, like I said, because of the, the division and the fallout, the elders in the movement and all grand bodies had not left the jewels of the practice. The general membership was to get you to get your nationality, get you in tune with your nationality and the basis of the knowledge. You learn the practices in the chamber. Okay. The chamber is people who, you know, has haven't been together completely for a long time. So there is no known practice at this that, that we have been revealed at this time. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about a daily ritual practice that Moors can practice. Okay that that hasn't been shown. So, um, but it's under the understanding that the Prophet Umar Ali was moving us towards incorporating certain practices, such as the, uh, the Salat. You know, it's under my, it's under my understanding and that we can actually practice the dhikr or the chanting of Allah or chanting of la ilaha illallah because that, you know, we, we are more American mosques. We derive our power and authority from the great Quran of Muhammad. Now, we won't, I don't necessarily promote the idea of incorporating a particular, let's say, Sufi order practice. Because some of them have certain practices accommodating or fits to their particular order or tariqa. But the general practice of you know chanting Allah, chanting La ilaha Allah, you know, those practices. There's verses in the Quran, in the Moshe Holy Quran you can chant. There's verses in the Moshe Holy Quran you can chant. Do a meditation and you can chant time never was when time never was when man was not. That's one I'm that's all I want to give because it's so because it's so powerful. You ever think about that? Time never was when man was not. That's a powerful sentence. You are, look, if you ever out and about, you got your fez on, and people, you somebody runs into you that might know the Moors and stuff like that. Like, oh man, you Moor? Oh man, drop some signs. Let me hear something. I mean, some people just want their their eardrums tickled. Just say this: Time never was when man was not. It ended like that. If they, if they go, oh man, you ain't drop nothing, man. I know that. I read the this. All right, then you missed the point then. Time never was. I didn't want to, um, and I know I got far from my, my other point. My point I wanted to make about uh, question four. Exactly. 
Ten, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Very powerful, too. Islam, brother Solo. Yep. That's a chant. Bush Holy Prayer, the uh, Bush American Prayer. That's actually a prayer of protection. Islam. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. Those are three attributes of Allah. Actual attributes. You can look up, look up guide. Look up protector, look up guide, and look up salvation. Those are actual attributes of Allah. By night and by day. By the seen and the unseen. He's supposed to protect you from the seen and the unseen. So I'm um, by night and by day. Those holy prophets, you are living. Amen. So be it. You know? So, um, chapter, I mean, question four is very important. This touches on what I said about the sheets for Brother Ibrahim. When you look at the relevancy of, of verse four, uh, well, question four, and so what's the nearest place you can meet it in the heart? More, a lot of Moorish Americans at temples, they, they, they say that verbatim every Sunday in remembrance, in remembrance, trying to remember, you know, embedded in their memory. But a sheik will fail his people and his members if he does not hold to true to that question. You fail your members if you do not hold true to that question. Where is the nearest place you can meet in the heart? That means that your job, your responsibility is to teach these members, every member, to reach within self and not nowhere else. The ability, you have your responsibility is to reach within self and nowhere else. To raise them up, raise your members up, that they can look within themselves. To rely on their truest and their purest form, to point towards their true self. The heart point to this, the nearest or the truest part, part of themselves. The heart, and they will see a lot. They will meet a lot. The grand sheik, the grand sheik is this, if they don't do that, or they don't at least give you knowledge into that aspect or inquiry into that aspect or something. They fought their family. They're trying to hold a position and not give it up. I don't deal off of how much knowledge you know, I deal with how sincere you are. How well do you follow directions? If I need something, so I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'll sincere on you to follow it. I'm not a drill sergeant. I don't drill, drill the lessons in. But I look at things. I notice what people do. I see the heart. I try to see people's heart. And I try to help people see their heart. And I gotta look towards my heart. But at the same time, you know, that's if any grand sheep then it's not doing that. They, they on their job. And unfortunately, uh, Brother Abdullah and everybody on this call, you know, grand sheep's everywhere really haven't been doing that. 
Now, some have, some have. You got some thorough, in tune sheiks out there and sheikesses, very in tune on a on a game that lives this thing. And you see it. Some walk through the street, they, they light is on on, on fleet right now. It's like it's pulsing. It's long. But and they pass that light on. They'll pass it on. Is wrong. So well, Morris. Uh we'll tr try to continue. Like this chapter is deep. There's others I'm trying to get into. We, we're gonna be studying um and so Ramadan we'll get into more of the Quran, more of the revelation, more of the life of Prophet Muhammad based on. Um, because it's very important. This is a new era in time now, Morris. And no longer will we put Prophet Muhammad on the back bar. Okay, he's a very important prophet amongst us. Very important. Very important. And when you look into who Prophet Muhammad is. So I might even do a, pres uh, a special presentation on just a little bit of what Prophet Muhammad is. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, I'm not an Islamic scholar. I don't, you know, I don't know a lot, but you know, I have a very vast esoteric understanding of different things because of where the school of thought I came from. So, you know, I think, you know, certain things need to be touched on regarding the prophets, regarding Islam, regarding, you know, the messenger that was sent with the revelation, Islam. Um, I continue to pray for um, for a brother Ace McVay um, and his mother or grandmother. Um, she did catch the coronavirus, but um, She's making a lot of progress. She's no longer on the ventilation machine. I haven't called them. I'm probably gonna call them this evening to see how she's doing. Um, just, you know, pray for our grand body. Say, you know, keep us in the ethers. Keep our uh, spring grand sheep, uh, keep their Giselle in the ethers. You know, just pray that a lot of guides us, you know. Islam, pray that Allah continues to guide us. We're, we're human. You know, we're having human experience. We have flesh. We have cardinal desires. We have misunderstandings, faults. We make, you know. So we got to stay in the ethers. We'll try. Strive to. We pray that we all do. That's all. Um, brother uh, Nathaniel McCoy Bay, do you got the... Uh, the literature, you want to read the readings? Islam, you there? Yeah, Islam, you, you ready for me to read them now? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Okay. Arise, giving perfect praise to Allah, and I give high honors to the Prophet Nobu Ali. Um, I'm gonna win. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna read the uh, the letters, and uh, you will will build on how you can um show me how to bring it in better. Um, she Islam. Islam. Salvation, Allah, unity, the more science tip of America, Noble Joali founder, send all official business to the home office in care of Supreme Grand Sheep, keep Dan just L. 
a warning from the prophet to be read in every meeting. As long. I hereby inform all members that they must put an end to all radical and agitated speech while on their job, homes, or on the public street. We advocate peace and not destruction. Stop trying out your cards with the Europeans for it causes confusion. There has been much confusion caused by members trying out their cards. The cards are for your salvation. Failure of obeying my orders will be of severe consequence. We offer love, truth, peace, freedom, and when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of member that seek to hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the prophet or to violate the divine covenant, covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors must obey the laws laid down to them by their prophet. And if they lose confidence in their prophet, give up your card and button, cease wearing your turban or fez, and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. But this is a holy and divine movement founded by the prophet Noble Drew Ali. And if the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The prophet is sending out a divine plea to all true Moorish Americans that they may do their part in protecting their prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Peace, Noble Drew Ali. To be proclaimed in every meeting, Islam. I'm glad to know that I have a few faithful Moors among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There is a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people of our side of the nation that claim that it was only a joke and unreal. But now, since they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens. They are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they themselves may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors, the attribute to the movement and of uplifting funds, the ones that pay their divine respect to me and movement will be remembered. That is why I'm calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet and your divine Moors movement. I need finance and I need it badly. Never before have I needed finance so badly as I do at present. So I can shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. Excuse me. It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being had. It has been proven by my works, which I have performed in the past few years. To the members of the Moorish Science Temple of America, Islam, this is the instruction from your prophet, Noble Juali. Be faithful until, until your forefathers divine and national creed that you will be blessed for your good deeds that you sow in the flesh. Allah is the one that judges the world and his judgment is now on, but the weak can comprehend it not. The end of time is drawing near, so says Allah to his divine prophet, I know you Ali. And that is why many hearts have been turned to stone and many have eyes to see, but cannot see, ears to hear, but cannot hear. Least they would be confounded of their sins. These are the trying hours now, dear Moors, and every evil spirit is moving and they are trying every weak mind to overthrow and drag out the true foundation 
that has been laid and cause confusion in the minds of the ones that do believe. But if you have the true love of Allah and the spirit of your forefathers, you fear not what you hear or see, but will sacrifice the utmost of your very life to protect your movement and your prop. Watch your enemies, dear Moors. Your enemies are the ones that speak against your prophet and ridicule him to the very lowest. And the ones that speak against your divine and national principles of your temples. Act accordingly and Allah will bless you for your good work. Peace, your divine prophet, Noble Duali. Islam. Islam, Islam, I'm going to close the meeting. Top is prayer. Allah, bind our hearts and minds, back to our ancient forefathers, divine creed and principles. This we ask in our holy name in the seven of Amen. Peace and love, Moors. Peace and love. Peace and love. Praise Allah. Islam. Islam.